Okay, this video is not to say that every single gaming phone sucks, but at the same time that it is completely pointless to make or buy one. Here are the six reasons why. Firstly, every Android phone basically uses the same chip anyway. When you go out and buy a gaming PC, you know that you're getting a box that prioritizes GPU performance so that games run better. But with a phone, that's just not the case. If you're a flagship phone in 2019, you're pretty much going to be packing the Snapdragon 855. And in this chip, the CPU and the GPU are fixed. It's not like Razer could look at it and be like, okay, we're gonna add 30% more graphics cores to this so that our gaming phone is actually better at gaming. And this leads me on to the next thing. There are minimal performance improvements. So almost the annoying part here is that even though these gaming phones are using the same chips, the companies try to make their phones look more powerful. And the way they go about doing this is wasteful, inefficient, and also kind of misleading. Take the Asus ROG phone. This is marketed as having an overclocked chip for maximum performance, but all they've actually done is changed the clock speed of four of the eight CPU cores, and then suggested that you use an external fan to help bring the temperatures back down. And guess what? The overclocked speed is 2.96 gigahertz, which makes it a 0.16 gigahertz overclock from basically every other phone. And then when you also factor in that they've overclocked the CPU, not the GPU, which is what might actually increase gaming frame rates, you end up with still worse gaming performance than the iPhone XS and that phone still manages to look clean and sophisticated. And then you've got the fact that companies like Xiaomi are now starting to add 10 gigabytes of RAM to the gaming phones. And the problem is that by the time Android is properly using 10 gigs of RAM, the rest of the hardware is going to be well out of date. I could completely deal with the above issues if it weren't for the fact that these phones are not built practically. I agree, they look cool to a certain demographic, but with every gaming phone I've held, the aggressive design language has come at the cost of ergonomics. These companies ditch the soft curves that help phones fit so nicely in our hands and replace them with flat angular edges. Not to mention LEDs that you can't even see while you're using the phone and just end up wasting battery. Generally speaking, nobody has a separate phone for gaming. You have one phone that you want to be able to use for everything. So it doesn't make sense to sacrifice on other important things you'll use your phone for, like taking photos and videos. I'm yet to use a camera on a gaming phone and be like, yep, that takes really great photos. And it's considered okay because, well, cameras aren't the priority here. But the problem is that your camera experience ends up suffering a lot more than your gaming experience is elevated. So you're just getting a worse phone. And then we've got the support. These gaming phones are not selling in the millions, sometimes not even in the hundreds of thousands. That makes them ultra niche devices. And this brings a whole nother slew of problems. Game developers will not optimize games specifically for your phone. When something goes wrong, good luck finding specific bug fixes and you're most probably gonna run into compatibility issues. And even when games do work, the chance that they will take advantage of your high refresh rate or surround sound speakers or ultrasonic pressure sensors is very slim. And then maybe most importantly, we've got just the fact that mobile games don't need it. Given that we're not really getting any extra performance with a gaming phone, these companies have had to make what I'd call alternative features, which is why we're seeing things like two separate USB charging ports on the same phone, one millisecond response times, and super high screen refresh rates. The clunkiness of using your fingers on a touch screen means that the difference between one millisecond, five millisecond, and 10 millisecond is not going to affect gameplay in the slightest. I do feel like a 90 hertz or even a 120 hertz display does add something tangible. They make a phone feel much more fluid, but that's one of those things that isn't limited to a gaming phone, and I'm pretty sure in 2019, standard flagship phones will also have high refresh rate displays. Kind of like how we've seen on the productivity-focused iPad Pro. The Razer phone has awesome speakers, but again, that's not something that's reserved to gaming phones. Recent devices from Samsung and Apple have pretty similar performance, and are examples of phones that do it all. It is true that the ROG phone especially can do a lot more than standard flagships because of the accessories they sell with it. But after having spent over a month with it now, I just can't see the viability of it. How many people will spend $200 for a box that lets them play a phone game on their TV? 
or $300 for a device that gives you two displays. It's cool, don't get me wrong, but it's just really impractical. All right, run over for now. Thanks a lot for watching. Catch you in the next one.